Okay, so again, thank you so much for coming. Um, it's great to see you all here. Um, and as Anna said, it's the first time we've managed to get all of our robots into, into one location. So it's, it's uh, very exciting to, um, to see them all sort of playing together nicely, apart from the antisocial ones, which um, don't like them. Um, so I wanted to talk mainly about uh, algorithms, um, this, this sort of word that's become this kind of currency for how we talk about how computers operate. Um, obviously in my work, uh, I, d I do all the coding, I've always done all the coding for uh, all of my uh, projects and all of these robots, of, um, uh, apart from Mary obviously, I fixed the bug I think. Um, have all uh, been expressions of my uh, understanding of coding. I've been coding for, for many, many years. Um, and uh, I'm interested in our sort of relationship between, uh, you know, what it means to be human and uh, what computers are. And this line is really blurred over the past, uh, it's getting blurrier and blurrier. Um, and I'm sort of interested in, in making work that explores. Uh, this from the inside out through my knowledge of coding. So there's uh, a piece in there called um, Generative Triad, a uh, pretentious title, I think, uh, which is, is showing, um, it's basically using uh, the slight inaccuracies of how computers store floating point numbers. So I won't, I won't go into the full details of it, but basically, the, you know, uh, computer won't store 0 0.6 in 32 bits, it will store it as 0 0.59 in um, Not inaccurate enough that you're going to lose money in your bank account, don't worry. Uh, and most computers will, will basically uh, adjust for it, but if you add them together and all these little uh, inaccuracies, uh, you can make something like this. So, so if, if it was perfectly accurate, these would be circles. Uh, that are sort of coming out, but because of the inaccuracies, they're coming out this sort of smoky kind of uh, effect. Um, and when I was putting this slide into PowerPoint, this sort of latest version, it actually uses an online service to analyze the picture to create alt text for your slide. Uh, and this is what it came up with. Um, I, I've not actually come across this feature before, but it, but it, so this is how it uh, classifies my, my image. Um, and again, it's, it's this sort of continual sort of shift. Um, so, so as Anna mentioned, the, the, um, the biocomputation robots, we've also got another one, which is our olfactory robot, um, which is a fairly prototype stage at the moment. It sort of works, but we've still, we still got a lot of work to do on it. And it, it's navigating uh, space using smell. Uh, obviously, that's not very normal for a robot, but we wanted to um, sort of experiment what that would be like. I mean, the idea of technology is uh, being able to look at the world in a different way. It's like, and, and that's why I sort of point this 3D camera, like, like getting different technologies that see the world in a different way allow us to see the world through that lens and... Uh, it becomes like a, a real sort of um, theme for the work that, that I've been doing. Uh, so, yeah, this, this will, will sort of navigate the... You know, smell is a one-dimensional uh, sense. You can only, you know, you can smell something and then go here and then does it smell stronger? You can sort of... It literally will follow its nose. Um, so, I was sort of thinking that the line between the digital and physical worlds... Um, I mean, when I, when I used to give talks, and I, I used to sort of, it seemed so much clearer, you know, the line between human and computer, but now it's, it's so blurred. Um, and I really like that, that idea that we can sort of take uh, computer information uh, and using one of these fantastic devices, uh, project it into the real world. Uh, so I did, I did, for instance, this, this live... Um, video mapping performance at, at Tate Modern where uh, I had these all cardboard boxes and I would you know, position a cardboard box and then add some animated video on top of them and then build some more and then knock them over and, um, and it was all about this, this sort of people would, would 
very quickly uh, accept these objects um, as, as kind of like almost like sort of real thing because they have this sort of physical nature. Uh, I mean, I had one box and it had this little uh, picture of a little baby fox, very cute little baby fox on it. And, and I was carrying some boxes off the stage and I, I kicked the box and, every, and the whole audience went, oh. And uh, it's like they've, they've really connected with this, um, with this thing. Um, went to, uh, what is it, Santa Monica Pier? Santa Monica Pier in, in LA, um, which I'd previously visited in Grand Theft Auto. Um, <laughs> this was a very strange experience. If you, if you play games, if you, if you um, get to have this experience, it's very odd. I was able to navigate the pier uh, because I played it in Grand Theft Auto. Um, and, it, and I was going, oh yeah, there's this you know, toilet here, they're just around the corner, or, or yeah, you, you can get you know, through there. And, uh, and it was like having this strange uh, meta knowledge um, about the world. So I, so I created this image when I got back where I sort of trying to do my best Grand Theft Auto pose, um, obviously without the large submachine gun, because, I mean, it is America, but it, you know, they, don't, they don't like that. Um, and, uh, and then sort of cut it in half with the, with the character in the game. Um, and, uh, and I was doing this uh, project which I uh, finished last year it was an 18 month project uh, working at the Francis Crick Institute um, in London just by St Pancras Station come out it's a very large imposing building uh, there, uh, and it's a permanent installation it's still there um, I think they're going to move it early next year but, um, and it's basically a, a 28 screen uh, video in sculpture, um, and it's it's basically trying to communicate something about the work that goes on in this building. This is the UK Centre for Genomic Research. We've got Cancer Research UK in there. Um, you've got um, Imperial College. I mean, there's 1,200 scientists in there. The, 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 I was given unprecedented access to labs and people and, and you know, met, uh, amazing uh, scientists that are working at the very highest levels. Um, and it was, and, and they, they asked me, are you going to communicate our science? I was like, no, I can't, you know, this, this, I can't do that because it's, it's, A, it's going to change, it'll be out of date in a month. Um, and B, the complexity of the work that is taking place there, even in just one lab, is, is kind of... Um, would be difficult to, to do justice, especially when I couldn't use sound or, or anything. So I went for a, a sort of aesthetic um, interpretation, and, and all, all of this imagery that you see here is all imagery that's generated in the labs and various labs combined with other labs. So it's this idea of, of sort of uh, working across laboratories and, and across uh, research areas. Uh, and then sort of filmed all around the building and went up on the roof and went down the basements and then uh, all over the place um, and created these, these sort of video montages of, of what was going on. One thing I really wanted to capture was the human element um, because when we talk about science we talk about what it is and perhaps we talk about you know, the person who, who discovered this you know, but it's not just that person, it's thousands of people, it's the people doing pipetting day in, day out uh, to, to generate the data and generate the numbers. Um, so I really wanted to sort of have this, this um, human element, uh, which is why there's lots of hands, so you can see people working. And, uh, so it was, uh, it was like sort of three legs of like the building, which is this custom-made, uh, insane sort of building that has to supply all these different gases and liquids all over the place, um, and the humans and the science. Um, as a way to connect with the people outside, that this is a human endeavor. It isn't something that's um, uh, separate from the public. It is, it is very, it's curious people doing work. Um, so I was kind of struck with this quote from a kind of dark, I think it's the, the film version rather than the, uh, the version, so sorry, purists. Um, but the idea of how we're being profiled by algorithms, how we're being um, looked at and categorized and predicted and uh, is, is kind of, so this, this felt very sort of 
uh, resonant uh, even now. The idea that, that you know, uh, it's looking at us, it's looking at our, our uh, actions, the things that we do, uh, and inferring things about us. Uh, and I hope it sees clearly. Um, and the idea, the sort of the reference about that you can no longer see uh, see into himself is, is sort of uh, kind of like we don't get to see how the algorithm works. We don't understand how Facebook's algorithms works or Google's, um, but we hope that they see us clear. Um, and I'm sort of using. Uh, is that uh, this idea to sort of explore algorithms um, um, to explore algorithms that are in our sort of everyday use uh, but trying to make them sort of more uh, understandable but not, not just on a sort of technical way but as, to give a sort of feel like with the generative piece in there uh, this is a, um, a piece which basically was, was trying to reveal uh, the algorithms behind video encoding. So it's using uh, color gradients, which video compression hates. It's like it likes nice sharp edges. It hates gradients, and I put the, the compression rate right up. And so what you actually get is a little bit hard to see, but you kind of get the idea. Is all these blocks. Uh, obviously weren't in the source video, that was just completely smooth. The blocks were all introduced by the video compression algorithm. Um, and so it's sort of a, a piece that sort of reveals this uh, aesthetic of the algorithm as a sort of side effect. Um, and sort of, as a sort of introduction for people to understand kind of what's going on uh, in those, in, the, in videos that we watch all the time. Um, so, in the other the room in there, um, the algorithmic photography work, uh, I managed to find the the genesis of this of this project, uh, which was an installation I did uh, in London in 2008, and this was um, part of a series of it was for Kensington Chelsea Council. Uh, it was situated along Chelsea Embankment uh, on the river uh, and it was working with uh, my good friend Martin A. Smith who's a sound designer uh, and sound artist uh, and we created six uh, installations mostly video maps so we'd project on the Rossetti fountain and there's the boy and the dolphin uh, I'm sure many of you have seen it and one of them was this uh, video screen with a camera and you would stand in front of the screen and you would sort of see yourself uh, kind of appearing in this kind of ghostly manner. And the idea was, was that, that you, uh, it was based on the Chris Marker film, Statues Also Die, or whatever it's in French. And the idea that, that uh, as you see a statue every day and you walk past it every day, that it dies because you stop noticing it. Um, so in this piece, you had to stand still if you stand still, you see yourself appear on the screen. Uh, you become the statue. So it's only by stopping uh, that you would reveal yourself. And, and I, I was really like this idea of a capturing motion. Uh, it's actually playing back really badly, but um, it, it was a flash video. I found it somewhere. Uh, and uh, and also the capturing motion, and also the, the idea of standing still. As a as a method of interaction, because not, you know a lot of uh, digital interaction is you know wave your arms about and run about and you know uh, so actually standing still seemed quite subversive. Um, so the algorithmic photographs. Uh, so I'm on a boat in Venice, and I basically set up the camera and I record for five minutes, uh, and I'm using a little GoPro. Uh, camera because they're great, portable, small. Um, and when I get home, I feed it through one of hundreds of algorithms that I've now been designing over the past few years. Um, and it processes every frame of video, that's 25 frames per second uh, for five minutes. And so it's um, 
the risks. Uh, and it takes some information, or maybe no information, from each frame and combines it into an end image. Uh, so this, this algorithm is very much looking for colour information, bright colours. Uh, so all of the, you can see all the reflections on the water, uh, and the lights and the buildings, it was a beautiful light, just as dusk was kind of falling, uh, and there was all this sort of very nice, uh, this is a kind of boat, it's another boat that's kind of going past this, uh, and it builds up uh, into these uh, very sort of abstract, but uh, this, this is a particularly abstract one, but, but some of them are uh, still sort of very recognisable. Uh, images. So, for instance, this Brighton Piers, where I, I live, I don't live in Brighton Piers, but uh, near there. Um, and these are seagulls hovering over people trying to steal their chips. And this is people uh, on the beach. Uh, it's a very nice hot day. Um, and you can sort of see all the trails of, of things. And it's sort of capturing the world that you recognise and the motion you recognise, but in a way that you've not seen before. So it's using algorithms to. Uh, reveal something new about the world. These are ants um, wandering about. Uh, these are people that look like ants um, in a beach in uh, Spain. Um, these are, again, this is in Brighton, this is uh, starlings, you know, the murmuration of starlings. Uh, they're coming into, coming into roost. Um, and these Technologies, these devices, th things like this, this camera, and I've got, I've got another one which is because uh, I'm doing a VR project which I'm just about to talk about. Um, so I, I bought uh, one of these VR 3D cameras. Uh, and what I find is that it changes how I view the world, how I, you know, with the algorithmic stuff, I've sensitized myself to notice motion more. Uh, with the 360, I have to sensitize myself to what's behind me. When I first got it, the amount of t pictures I took, which ended up having toilets in the back, was, was a bit embarrassing, you know. So I'm always like, is it a toilet? No, it's fine, let's take the photo. Um, so, and for me, this, this is really exciting, this sort of idea of using technology to not just augment our senses, but augment our appreciation of the world that we live in and interactions between us. So, obviously, I'm slight running over time, so I'm just going to hint at this project, because even though I've been working on it for months, uh, it's not even been announced yet. The press release is coming out soon. It's because I'm working with the council, and, and they're, they're amazing, but obviously things move a little slowly. Um, and it's a big project about digital preservation, um, and how we preserve digital artworks, and how we preserve digital information, we're, we're generating so much of it. I think it's 5,000 hours, gets uploaded to YouTube every minute. Uh, what do we keep? All of it? Some of it? None of it? Who decides? Does Google decide? Do you decide? As the content creator? Um, as an artist, you know, robots are, are very difficult to keep running for even through the show. <laughs> um, how do, how do we preserve that for a hundred years? So uh, this, um, especially in, in, the, in this is a piltdown man skull that, that I've scanned in through photogrammetry, um, which is a fake. Obviously, it's, it's not a real a real thing, and, and it's kind of alluding to, to sort of fake news. We're in you know we're in this um, time when when fake news and fake information has the same urgency and is taken is distributed at the same rate as real information. So how do we discern? How do people in the future discern what was real, what was not? Uh, what is culture going to be? Culture tends to be the things that last. So how do we make sure that the stuff that lasts is the good stuff that we want to keep? Uh, and that could go on for a long time, but um, I can't talk about that. So thank you very much.